Morning GoPro, Sunday 4th October 2020. It's um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. That's at the 4th of October. Last week went so quick. I'm in like a pretty good routine with like work training uni but it just seems like you blink and like weeks are gone it's only one day after so tomorrow will be the test the body felt really good at the moment after yesterday 33 k's kind of hit the wall after 30 i think that's just I was like googling a bit about marathon running and stuff yesterday and that's just, that's just kind of that point. So they talk about marathon being 26 miles after the 20 mile mark, most people sort of hit something even if you're a full on runner sort of thing, so, and that's about 30 k's, 20 miles, 30 k's. So I think I'm just going to have to work with that, and kind of train, they said the best you can do is just kind of train for it. So just keep training it, yeah, and try and get to 30 k's, 30 k's a bit over. And then when it hurts and you've got nothing, just kind of push through it. Just kind of get your body used to dealing with it, I guess. Mm. Kind of happy where we are with uni. Haven't done a whole bunch yesterday because yesterday sort of like recovery from the run. But I kind of printed out some um, things for the theoretical framework. So first semester I didn't... I got a pass for research methods so that was like basically the theoretical sort of thing of the assignment the project so I've had to I've really had to sort of change that to try and get a decent grade so I've worked out the socio-ecological uh, theoretical framework for PE is the best one to use for my assignment rather than the one I was using so this theoretical framework is going to frame obviously my discussion about the results from the interviews because it talks about the different factors like the environmental factor the social factor the individual factors that are affecting physical activity which i think is pretty good because some of the girls some of the exes <laughs> i interviewed talked about you know covid environmental factors being a barrier um if I was somewhere where there was like organized netball, that's where I'd be doing that because I don't live in the netball area, that's why I don't play it. So that's a, a um, environmental institutional factor kind of thing. So they've given us a bit to talk about. So I talk about, so the next chapter I've got to write this week is the theoretical framework chapter. So I do like a good thousand words on this socio-ecological model that'll frame the discussion from the research which I think is pretty cool it's just I, I don't really know it I kind of stumbled onto it because the journal articles I had were referencing it I'm like oh that kind of looks interesting well why haven't I done that which kind of makes sense so today I've got to kind of probably got about three or four good journal articles I've got to read and try and synthesize the information so I can understand it so I can write a thousand words on it tomorrow and go from there this week so that's this week theoretical framework so I get that section all done with the method section of you know these are the participants this is why I'm doing them da da then that chapter's kind of done and then we're into the actual results of the study We've got to write that up and that's so that's like the next two weeks once I've bugged it and we're out so So yeah if I get through this week with that and then the week after then the week after and then the last week polish up it's kind of where I want to be on track. It's just like okay last week which true view this week theoretical framework next week uh, results week after that discussion yeah, it's just like, okay. And then we're running as well. So we just weighed ourselves there. We've weighed ourselves the last three weeks GoPro at the gym here. We've gone 96, 97, 
99 and a half. So I'm putting on weight, which is annoying. Because <laughs> I've like literally run 30 k's the last three weeks. And I've put on three kilos in the last three weeks. <laughs> I'm trying to like lose weight to be a streamlined runner, but we're putting on weight. So I might have to do something. Yeah. Eating all those carbs, bread, pasta, sugar for the energy for the run, but then putting on weight. But I don't feel I don't feel bloated, I don't feel bulky, I can actually see my abs. I don't know, maybe maybe leg muscles? That might be it. Might have put on three kilograms in quads and hammies and calves. The legs seem strong. Yeah. But yes, we might maybe Obviously we're just gonna have a salad and some fruit today. <laughs> but yeah. Interesting. We'll see where we go next week. What our um weight is. But I recovered really well yesterday. So usually after the big run I eat um I treat myself to shit food, fast food, uh chips, burgers, uh fish and chips. But yesterday I went and got like a good pasta, pesto, salad thing from Woolworths. Had like six bread rolls, peanut butter, uh, vegan plant protein. Yeah, didn't really. I had a Coke and a Lucas Aid. But yeah, I didn't really have any of that sort of garbage stuff, which I have been doing. That might be why I feel kind of good. Then again, a pasta and six bread rolls might have something to do with the extra kilo this morning. It's very, very interesting, GoPro. Very interesting. Maybe not. Goodbye. Hey GoPro. Monday, 5th October 2020. 6.30 in the morning, 5Ks, footy club. About 28 minutes, 5.30Ks, 5 minutes. Turn Mr. Young the Giant off. Oh, more my head. Oh yeah. So usually Mondays I sort of do like the yoga down the beach. I kind of wanted to do an earlier run this week. It's almost like a recovery run from the weekend. Because I figure I kind of got to get those muscles moving. So yeah, first little bit, first case, waking up, walking, a bit stiff and sore. But then sort of once like those two, three Ks got in, like the fourth K and the fifth K, I was actually doing really good pace. And I wasn't really like trying to up the tempo or anything, I was just sort of just in that sort of zone. But then after that I kind of felt almost nauseous for a bit. But yeah, so it was a bit of a shock to the body. So I've been doing like all those long runs, I haven't really done like this speed sort of quicker run. So I was doing like 5.30 pace, 5.11, 5.17 for the Ks. Whereas for the big run I'm doing like 6.30, on average for a K. It was about a minute, qu minute quicker per K, which the body was like, whoa. But I think that's what you kind of got to do. You got to sort of jolt it around a little bit. So maybe even tomorrow, I almost want to maybe sit on an exercise bike at the gym or a row machine, a little bit of cross training, just to get the legs all juicy up. But yeah, we really, we almost like, I was like high five myself yesterday at uni. Because after literally a year doing this research project, I actually kind of just worked out what to do and what I was actually talking about. Because the whole research thing with the methodologies, I didn't know what I was talking about for all first semester. Ontologies and epistemologies and hermeneutic constructivism. And but then yesterday I like found a methodological framework which actually made sense and made sense to what I'm actually studying and researching. I'm like, yeah, this actually
actually make sense to me now. Whereas I wish I would have had this six months ago when I was doing the first research methodology and possibly before I was doing the research question because I might have changed the questions a little bit. But I'm sure I can adapt them. So it's a Broffenheimer's social ecological model of physical education. And it's the fact that like not so much a product of your environment but it's you develop because of what's in your environment so interpersonal intrapersonal and the environmental factors affect your physical activity participation so it's like your own motivation stuff if you're a student your social group your school group teachers school environment and then the outside environment so say if you play soccer and none of your friends play soccer you might not engage in it because your social group's not into it and your school might not have a soccer field so you might not do it and then your town might not have a soccer field either so there's your environmental factor institutional factors this all makes sense i don't know what i was stuck doing hermeneutic constructivism and epistemology phenomenology I literally was still in that mode first semester. I'll put some big words in and to make it sound fancy. But you almost gotta be like, you can't cheat yourself. I, think I was trying to cheat first semester. Like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That sounds fancy. Whereas now I'm like, no, no, no. This actually makes more sense if I'm investigating sustainable physical activity. So it's a good and a bad thing, GoPro. So it's good, because I kind of know what I'm doing for that section. But it kind of means I might have to like rewrite all the other sections. Which is, um, it's going to take some time. Yes, yeah, so we'll finish off the last little bit of the literature review. So that was yesterday, so the, the theoretical framework was part of the literature review. I did like a good thousand words on the socio-ecological model of physical education. I've got a cool like diagram thing that's got all the components. So conclude the literature review today, start on the research methodology. So this will be like a breakdown, design, paradigm, uh, my ontological perspective of how I'm going to look at the research with the socio-ecological framework into it. I'm just kind of confident, I kind of know what I'm talking about now. And literally all last semester I literally didn't know what I was talking about. It's kind of funny to admit that. Hmm. I guess that's the whole thing with uni, like you teaching you how to learn how to do these sort of research things. But yeah, today, so we'll crack on today for today, a couple of hours. Just get that on, so that's this week, get that one kind of done. Tweak, tweak, tweak. And then boom, we're into like analyzing the data, which is the big one. And then talking about that data with this theoretical framework. Which is kind of cool. All coming to a head, GoPro. Which makes these little morning runs even more uh, beneficial, important, mindfulness. Yeah. Just sort of set ourselves for the day. Yeah, I'm glad I read the socio-ecological framework first because I was thinking about doing that or the trans, trans-theoretical framework which was more about choices which was more about if I'm sort of changing a behaviour sort of the steps I go about in changing that behaviour so you could always talk about that like say a physical activity trying to get physically active it's like oh, contemplation, initiation, blah blah but that's not really what I'm talking about. So what I'm, what I'm researching is more the environmental, all the factors that are involved in that physical activity, development, choices, 
avenues, sustainability, epistemological perspectives. Oh, go pray. See you, buddy. Hey, GoPro. Just leaving the uni, buddy. I just pumped like five, six hours, I guess, of garbage. Um, yeah, I was having a lovely yoga meditation on the beach this morning. I was about to have a chat with you then, but then you decided to go flat, so we just charged you up at the uni. I guess I probably got there about maybe 6.30, and then from like 7 till now, which is 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock on the dots when I clock out of uni, is, um, it's five hours. And I was kind of immersed in this research project, working out my methodological framework, my design, my paradigm, my ontological and epistemological perspectives with the interpretist and constructionist approach to learning using the socio-ecological framework for physical education which uses that there's interrelated multifaceted to design of interpersonal, intrapersonal and environmental factors which affect physical activity participation. Yeah, I'm kind of... So this sort of section of the project is basically the one that I don't really know what I'm talking about last semester. And I just sort of just scraped through in the research methods subject with a pass. So I'm really kind of trying to like get this one on top of things at the moment. Which I think I'm kind of there. Because all the things I'm talking about now kind of make sense and they're kind of interrelated. Whereas last time, last semester, they weren't. So I think coming up with that socio-ecological framework, obviously it's the framework, so it assists and streamlines everything around it and in it and all the rest of it. So that kind of helped me once I worked that one out to where I'm actually going. So I'm kind of like, I'm probably maybe spending double the time doing it because I'm sort of maybe trying to learn it and then apply it rather than just applying it, which kind of makes sense. So yeah, so a lot of work, very dense. So it's almost like you've got to need to turn, like actually interpret and understand what the concepts are. And then, oh, okay, so that one kind of relates to that one and you can use that one with that approach and if you have that theological perspective, then you can use that one. It's almost like you need to know all of them before you can select which ones you want to do. And who's got all the time for that GoPro? Obviously everybody. So yes, I'm kind of on track. So we're about 12,000 words in. 
got the idea of them. But it's just like maybe formatting it and putting um, uh, like social factors, environmental factors, behaviour, barriers, motivation, like putting them all in a thing and then actually talking about them and then actually talking about them in regards to this framework. And I think that's that, that's that's the project. It's um, yeah. I think with all my hesitation last semester, because I didn't really know what I was talking about, and I was just being arrogant and defending my own propositions. The whole sort of going away from focusing on investigating yoga and mindfulness, focusing on just sustainability gives you the broad spectrum and just slanting in a little bit of yoga and stuff as a almost like a concluding um, proposal it's probably the best way to do this yeah so that's me GoPro that's me October the 6th in like two weeks time will be the end of October this is so I'm going to be done and then we're going on to November give myself a pat on the back for productivity GoPro, this year would be it. But we're not there, we're about halfway, three quarters. Not even halfway to this assignment, but I'm just, what's the word GoPro? Confidence? Not confidence, but I just feel that I've got more of a grasp on it than last semester. Last semester, it was almost like I was just making shit up. Literally just making it up. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I'll put that word next to that one. And yeah, that, that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I'm interviewing people, yeah, this, I'll do this. And yeah, then I'll do this. And yeah, that, 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 that's what I'll do. Yeah. I had no idea what I was talking about. And scraped through with a pass and a credit. So this time, I think I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I'm kind of hoping for a decent, a decent grade. Because it's a double weighted assignment unit thing. So if we get a distinction, I think we'll be happy. Five distinctions are probably a little bit ambitious, being our novice status in the research area. However, that's where we're at, GoPro. It's getting a bit busy. I can't talk to you and drive in my state, all that guys. Yeah, but okay, we're gonna die here. Bye-bye! Morning GoPro. Wednesday the 7th of October 2020. We are at 6.46. Just did 10 k's of the footy top here. I usually only do like a 10 lap or 5 k's. I'm like, I'll do 10 k's. So I did that in 57.14, which pretty happy with. I was sort of almost struggling a little bit about halfway, just kind of ticking it over, ticking it over. Might have been a mental because I'm usually like after 5k stop. Yeah, 10k's, 57 minutes. I want to go under a minute, under an hour. So that was good. And it felt okay. Always a little bit weird on a Wednesday. I usually go to the gym and do like weights, but I kind of feel like Almost a bit bulky. So I'm kind of um, yeah, trying to maybe ease off the traction on that. Um, yeah, so last two Wednesdays I've done a run. I feel alright. So we'll do a uni today. And just sort of yeah, cruise along. Try and do like a bit of the methods. Yeah, we'll just sort of get through today, GoPro. Eat well, recover well now. Let's take a minute, get the heart rate down. It went up a bit. So high of 170, under 78 now. Which is what you want. But yeah, I was sort of trying to just get in the headspace. I went all sort of hurt and pushing a bit from when I'm hitting those 30k marks. Yeah, just trying to work out a few little sort of tools and techniques and mantras. Yeah. 
kind of feeling I want to do a couple more sort of incline runs on a treadmill at the gym because I find I feel I know where because I feel like I'm a bit bulky, a bit top heavy. I'm like leaning forward a bit too much. And I'm like sort of head down when I'm running, which isn't the best. So I need sort of more shoulders back and straighten up a little bit. So I think that might play into it a little bit. But yeah, it's a bit of a coolish morning. I was sweating though. I had two t-shirts on and I was sweated through the second t-shirt, which yeah. Sometimes you feel like when you're in that sort of zone, just ticking over, you don't realise that you're actually going at a decent pace. So 57 minutes, 10 k's on grass, no obstacles, no left, right, no inclines. So I think the average pace is about 5.40, 5.30. So with that, it's, um, it's a decent pace. So it's under the pace I want to go for the marathon. But it's also probably a little bit high for just a recovery run. So on my it always comes up your recovery time on the garden. So it came up recovery time 58 minutes, 58 hours. Which I thought that's, that's pretty good. It's like two and a bit days. I think I was actually going pretty hard, but my um, rate of perceived exertion was sort of not too bad for about three quarters of it. I'm feeling it towards the end and then yeah, it keep going. Well, I didn't slow down a whole lot because my lap times were almost very consistent. Almost between 5.35 and 5.45. It's like 5.38, 5.39, 5.37, 5.41. Which I think was really cool. I think that's kind of what I want to do for the 50. It's just have a consistent pace. So for the 50, I think the pace is going to be about 6.30. 6.30 consistent pace per minute. That'll get me 5 hours and 30 minutes for the 50. And then it might have a little bit slower, a little bit quicker, up and down, different things. But yeah, so we do these runs are a bit quicker than our pace we're doing for the marathon. And we also go maybe incline run to the treadmill with like a decent pace too and then that means hopefully we're training our um, anaerobic threshold a little bit more so then when we come into that sort of endurance, endurance, 30 k's, 30 k's and we're really struggling here in the wall one got the tools and the ability just to push it forward it all sounds really lovely doesn't it GoPro? I don't know if you can train for that 30 hours, 3Ks, glycogen stores, depleted, and then your head starts going. Which I've experienced literally the last three weeks. So maybe I am training for it, I just don't really know yeah, if it's a nutrition thing, if it's a pace thing. Yeah. So I'm almost thinking I might maybe do, instead of like jogging the whole thing, like, you know, take a little five minute walk here and then maybe try and not have that bomb. Hi right, buddy. See you tomorrow. Mate. GoPro! What do you know buddy? Ah, oh, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, please, please elaborate. Tell me more GoPro. Yeah, right, I see. Well, perhaps if you, um, yeah, cultivate that, that might be good for you, buddy. <laughs> okay, mate, what I know is today is Thursday the 8th of October 2020. About 6.38 a.m. We are driving back to the uni from Jets at Rabina, which we had a fair training session. I thought this gym was lovely because people were pretty good and had good gym etiquette GoPro but today there were some absolute peanuts there. I don't even want to go into it because I'm going to get frustrated talking about it in GoPro. But 
yeah, absolute peanuts. So my, what I did, I thought I was doing pretty well. But yeah, sometimes you just get annoyed with people. That's life though, GoPro, isn't it? So I wasn't trying to do much today. I was just trying to go like just strength. So I'm feeling a little bit bulky. <laughs> so really try to do a few more sort of repetitions at a lower weight just to try and sort of slim up a little bit. But I think I might have to, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's, it's a good or a bad thing. It's probably good to be a little bit bulky now, six, seven weeks out, and then we can sort of cut down a bit rather than being bulky a week before. But then again, it's going to be a fine line because last time I felt too lean and I didn't have enough power. Whereas I felt good and bulky for the 100. So I kind of want to have a bit, but I don't want to have like too much. Too much could be a little bit tricky. It's um, it's one of those things where, I don't know. I just don't know, buddy. I just don't know. So I'm going to go maybe to... Um, I don't even know. I might leave you to it, buddy. I might talk to you another day at another time. Goodbye. GoPro, Friday, October the 9th, your battery is going to die in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, eating before we run. Yeah, eating, 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 eating. Lots of stuff to eat. Nom, 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 nom. Ah. Hey buddy, so it's Saturday, 10th of October, at 9.30am, I've just charged up a little bit, did 30Ks. Three hours, doing about six minute Ks up till about 26 K mark, and then just hit the wall. I was doing seven for the last couple, so I finished just over three hours. But I had like a good pace, consistent six Ks, probably quicker than I thought I'd go out. But when I realized I was on that pace, I just kept going, kept going. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, now we're just relaxing, just trying to rehydrate, just get through it all. But yeah, ate well yesterday, ate well this morning, up and go banana, bar, coffee, hydrolyte. So I had all the energy, but I know I'm just hitting this wall at like 25, about two and a half hours. I don't know if I can actually not hit that wall at that point. I think it's just trying to get through that, which is what's going to be the key. It's almost like a wave hits you. It's almost like I feel like the top of my bottom of my sternum feels like it's almost like coming up from your tummy and then boom, it's like a wave just hits you. And then yeah, you just you got nothing. I think it's like literally the last three weeks. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, training I think at that higher pace is better for me. It just felt better rather than, because you're still doing the same steps and the same impact. Rather than just like jogging on the spot, you're actually moving, which I felt good. So I might do that for these training runs, just like move, try and get that six minute rather than 6.30. But then for the actual 50, go at 6.30. So that's another week done. And now, we're on to 37 or 38, I think, tomorrow. 